got some more 1070s right here. This is the MSI uh, GTX 1070 Gaming Z Edition. It's a two slot card right there. And a lot of overclocking power here. They've got military grade components and a 10 phase power design. So that's what you get. You also get a backplate. It's becoming sort of a standard thing on the premium cards out there. And uh, the backplate is decently sleek. Turn it around this way so you can see it. And of course, it wouldn't be a modern component for gaming unless it had RGB. And that's the most important thing. Nothing else matters. Who cares about the 10 phase power design? Who cares about the, the, the fancy fans that... Uh, I guess they have a really severe angle to, to send more more uh, air down there. We've got eight millimeter heat pipes. Doesn't matter. We've got RGB. RGB will keep it under 60 degrees at all times. That's a lie. I'm just making that up. Anyway, let's uh, really talk about this. There's the ID. You can see it. There's the front. You can see it. There's the top. You can see it. Six pin plus an eight pin. So that's also not reference or not founder's edition. Get a little bit more power going to it. SLI, of course, right there. And then the front here, we have uh, three DisplayPort 1.4s. Then we've got the HDMI 2.0B and Dual Link DVI. Support up to four displays at the same time, if you like. Now, on top of the, uh, you know, the eight millimeter uh, heat pipes, uh, they also have a solid plate that's gonna go on your GPU, which is nice. And they're advertising a premium thermal compound. Okay, when I was in games with a 100 megahertz overclock, it never, uh, got above 73, but it usually stayed around 65 to 67, somewhere in that range, uh, and that's Celsius. I also want to note that the fans don't even kick on until you get to 60 degrees, so a lot of light gaming sessions, you're playing some games that are not that demanding or older games, the fans are not even going to kick on and you're gaming in total silence. Unless you have a big, nasty, ugly CPU heatsink that sounds like a motor. Let's talk a little bit about the fans on this. They're the Torx 2.0 fans, and this is the Twin Frozer latest edition of the Twin Frozer. They're advertising that it generates, you know, 22% more air pressure compared to what, I don't know. But hey, as long as it stays cold and overclocks well, that's all I care about, and it did a pretty good job with that. Uh, we have the dispersion fan blade, which is a more severe angle. Traditional fan blades are less severe of an angle, so that's pretty much how they're generating a little bit more air pressure. Now, I used MSI Afterburner to do my overclocking, but uh, they have a new MSI gaming app that will allow you to control you know, your RGB lights, uh, your fan, just all kinds of different things. There's a special gaming app just for this, and you can run it in OC mode if you want. Give it a little boost as far as the fans go and everything else. And then gaming mode, then silent mode. So there's, you know, all this stuff that you can do pretty easily with the app. If you want to try it, go ahead. So we have 8 gigabytes of uh, RAM. It's actually 8,192 megabytes of GDDR5. It's 256 uh, bit card. RAM is effectively clocked at 8,108 megahertz. That's overclocked. That's in OC mode, that is. Now this has three different modes, like I said. So first off, let's start with silent mode, and the base clock is 1506, uh, boost is 1683, and then when you go to gaming mode, it's 1582 and 1771. And then when you go up to the OC mode, which I think a lot of you guys will be using, it's 1607, and the boost clock is up at 1797. Now I was easily able to push this over 2,000 megahertz just using the uh, MSI Afterburner, but you can go and use their OC uh, software and probably get really high as well. Um, I didn't do that much. I usually do like whatever I can do in four or five minutes, and then I run my benchmarks. So that's that. Also, the card weighs uh, 1.1 kilograms. It is 297 by 140 by 42 millimeters. It's you know, two slot, of course. And it can use up to 150 watts of power. They recommend a 500 watt power supply. That's pretty much all the specifics, uh, uh, you know, with this MSI. Uh, 1070 now of course you get the nvidia technologies like all the fancy stuff for vr but i'm not going to cover all that uh you know ansel and everything else it, it, it all is built into this you know pascal stuff here so you guys can go watch uh, well we made a video on the 1070 i'll link that in the description i mean the 1080 and i'll link that in the description but all the nvidia technologies uh, should carry over just fine uh here with the 1070. for the benchmarks we did several different games, some indie games, and uh, benchmarked everything on an Intel 6700K based system. And one thing that's interesting about the benchmarks is I've uh, picked games that all use different engines to give you guys an idea of how it's gonna run with several different engines. First off, we started with Valley, which is a CAN benchmark. And as you can see, it did pretty good at all the different resolutions. Of course, 4K is something that I've only seen the 1080 get above uh, 30 FPS, maybe a 290X2 or something like that. I don't know, maybe one of those cards will do it, but yeah. Next up, Vanishing of Ethan Carter. That's a um, Unreal Engine 4 game, and uh, that one did just fine. Now with 4K on these things, I'm running this with filters and everything. On 4K, just about any of these, I would probably recommend turning off the filters because then you'll get a, a you know almost the same performance as 1080p, so 
Yeah, and 4K without filters looks better than 1080p, 1080p with filters, but for the sake of this video, we did test with filters. Uh, moving on to Doom, uh, and that is uh, going to be OpenGL. Well, we'll test Vulkan. We didn't test these. Vulkan just came out like the day I'm making this video. I'm like, ah, shit, I've already done the, the benchmarks. But anyway, you're going to get OpenGL for this. We'll do Vulkan later. And you see there, pretty good. Um, slightly less performant than the uh, Zotec that we played with, but um, still very respectable. Then up with System Shock, and this one is still in development, so it's kind of a joke, but hey, System Shock's awesome, and it's running uh, on, on Unity. It's not optimized yet, but even then, let's throw the uh, test results out there. 4K is still above uh, 30, so very playable and very smooth. Frame times are pretty good, too. Next up, Witcher 3, and this card does a pretty good job Witcher 3, but Witcher 3 really taxes these cards, especially with filters on at 4K, but it can still do it at above 30. It did drop down below 30 a few times, so turn off filters, man, and you're happy. Everybody's happy. Yay, aren't you happy? All right, Soma, another indie company with their own engine. And Soma did really well at all resolutions, including 4K, still above 80. So very nice there. Now there aren't really too many downsides when it comes to this MSI. It didn't quite hit the, uh, you get the same results as the Zotec that I tested a, uh, you know, a few days ago, but it is a lot smaller than the Zotec. I mean, you know, it's two instead of two and a half slots. Um, that's probably the big thing. Zotac just attacked the heat problem by saying like thermal mass plus the Zotac has two eight pins. This has an eight pin and a six pin. It's going to be up to you as you know, like, hey, how, how much performance do I need? And and, uh, you know, this one can be overclocked a lot. So you can probably overclock it a little more than I even did. I just did a quick version. Vulcan is something else that's going to be interesting. Once we get some more Vulcan games, maybe we can come back and do some Vulcan tests on all these. Uh, Linux support is good out of the box with these. Uh, it's, it's pretty decent. All that's something to consider as well. I mean, what do you want? It's a fast card. It's got decent components. It's an MSI. Do you guys have any questions? Just do something. I don't know. Just go ask them in the forum. And uh, click on some stuff on the screen, whichever side of the screen it's on. And that's the end of the video. See you guys later. Let us know what you think or else I'll put eggs in your shorts.